Today, I have four tactics that I consider to be the best around for those underdog teams. Tactics that can propel a relegation scrapping team into European qualification places and turn a mediocre players into football's dangerous weapons. With four very different shapes and formations too, hopefully I can find a tactic that will suit whatever team you're struggling with right now. Now, all of the links to these tactics will be down below in the description, which also includes a link to today's sponsor, Skillshare. But there is more on that later on in the video. And let's aim for a target of 500 likes, because if you're going to go down there, you might as well press the like button. And if we have 500, I will hunt down some more tactics for you for another video. Maybe also while you're down there, suggest a team in the comments that you'd like to see me trial one of these tactics with. Don't make it easy for me. Now, the first tag that we are looking at today is the leader 41320. Of course, it's strikerless, pass, and attack. Now, you can see that this still has two shadow strikers up front shadowing no one so really it just counts as two strikers still with an attacking mentality though inverted wing backs help to fill in either side of this defensive midfielder when on a counter attack an extremely high tempo when attacking but with shorter passing gagan press style distributing to the defense and out of position, a much higher line of engagement and a standard defensive line, getting stuck in and using the offside trap. Now the individual instructions, as you can see here, you are looking for the lighter green one on each of these players. These are the ones that have been selected outside of what the player roles already gives you. And this tactic actually made Fulham finish in 8th place. If we take a look at the season preview, they are originally predicted to finish in 15th, down there at 400 to 1. So back into almost European contention spots there in 8th place, it's not bad going. Now my suggestion would be to try and find midfielders that have high work rate, considering that both on the distance covered per 90 minutes and the distance covered, we can see a lot of our midfielders here covering a lot of distance. And you can see that from the midfield runners. We can see a couple of goals here from West Ham where we just have the midfielders bombing forward. So many people here in the box, Ruben Loftus-Cheek benefits from this one. And on the next goal is exactly the same. Ayana, the right midfielder, picks it up here inside lovely through pass to Loftus-Cheek who manages to fire home from a very acute angle. And again, the midfield run of Ina, running forward, keeps on running. He has players going forward as well. And there is Lamina, the centre midfielder, finding a gap in the defence and finding the back of the net. The next underdog tactic, though, we can see takes Strasbourg to second in the league. Yes, my French team Strasbourg, who we did the youth to gold with last year, finding themselves second in the league, only behind an unbeaten Paris Saint-Germain. And if we take a look at this, the four games that they lost was not against PSG. And as well as being unbeaten against PSG, Ludovic Ajorque, with 27 goals, finds himself as the league's top scorer in 38 games, beating second place Irvin Cadone by six goals and Ludovic Jorge is a great striker but this tactic clearly gets the best out of this very strong target man and we did mention how PSG pretty much dominated the lead they dominated all of the statistics but what we can see is Strasbourg are there in second place the second most amount of goals they also have the joint second fewest conceded and the joint second most clean sheets and we can actually see in their schedule that they actually went on an incredible unbeaten run only dropping four points against Monaco and PSG in the second half of the season from March down through to May, picking up so many wins and scoring so many goals. Now the tactic itself sees two attacking midfielders, one on attack, one on support, in behind Ajorke as an advance forward on attack. Two wingers, one DLP on support and two inverted wingbacks again to fill that role to prevent counter attacks from happening. Again, an attacking mentality if we see here in possession, we're trying to overlap, we're running up the defence, slightly more passing directness so we're pushing the ball further the forward a lot quicker at a much higher tempo in transition again it's a gagan press distributing the ball to the fullbacks but slowing the pace down at the goalkeeper out of possession is a much higher line of engagement and just a higher line of defense
defense. It uses the offside trap, but yet again, we are getting stuck in, preventing the short goal kick distribution. And if we take a look at all of the individual instructions here on the right hand side as I'm clicking through, the majority of them have pass it shorter when that selection is available. That is obviously to make sure that we are not wasting possession, we're not getting the ball, hoofing it long, giving the ball back to the opposition and inviting the pressure back on ourselves. We're trying to be clever with the ball, although we're being direct, we're trying to keep it shorter and if you think about it, you look at the shape of this formation, there is always going to be a diagonal pass going forward if you've got the ball here you can play it into here and every single way every single position that the player gets the ball there's a diagonal pass on forward and back and if we're passing shorter hopefully we're not losing the ball in silly positions and giving away cheap goals and in this victory against Bordeaux, where Ajorke gets himself a hat-trick, we can see some really tight, intricate play here, where Ajorke is a huge focal point of this attack, playing a couple of 1-2s and firing it in past the goalkeeper. And in the victory against Lyon, a 2-1 victory, we can see our attack in midfielder getting a couple of goals with some fantastic running yet again. The deep line playmaker picking him out for Jean Belgard to get the first one. And on the second one, with a little bit of wing play, finding our substitute striker coming off the bench. Back to Belgard, who smashes it in the top corner, finding himself in so much space on the edge of the area where the defenders just don't know where to pick him up. Another nap tactic now, the Venom and Faith 4-4-2, which is slightly tweaked with a deep line playmaker in the DM role. This sees a 14th place Levante actually finish just outside the European spots in 7th position in La Liga. And this tactic actually created the most clear-cut chances with 44, 10 more than Barcelona in second place, despite finishing in seventh position in the league, creating the most clear-cut chances. So if we were more clinical with these clear-cut chances, we could have probably finished a lot higher in the league. Now, the tactic itself has a positive mentality, but with both strikers and both wingers set on attack. In possession, again, we're trying to overlap on both sides, playing the ball out of defence, running at the defenders. On the passing directness, it's a shorter passing directness again, kind of like the last tactic there. We don't want to lose the ball, but with a higher tempo, trying to get the ball forward faster, just not over the top ball, lobbing it long. In transition again is, of course, a Gagan press, throwing it long to the fullbacks and out of position we have a much higher line of engagement and a standard defensive line keeping the play very wide open between our strikers and our defenders but we are using the offside trap again getting stuck in and again using prevent short goalkeeper distribution if we take a look at the individual instructions here you're going to notice a lot of tackle harder amongst other selections that have been made make sure you obviously if you cannot download these tactics you are copying every single one and pausing throughout this to make sure the tactic is exactly identical as the one you're seeing here. If it wasn't for the end of the season, look how many reds that we have here. A lot of losses throughout this season. It, the season might have been slightly better than what we have seen. Because the past positions, we can see it wasn't until match week 14 that we actually dropped outside of the top three positions that we managed to accumulate in match day six. After a win against Elche, 4-0 in that game, we continued to play in third place until we started to drop off. And then that league form really stunted our growth into the end of a big push there into sixth place finishing down in seventh and we can see here look how high our wingers are in this goal it causes so much trouble and so many opportunities a little lapse in concentration there from their right their left back means that our right midfielder goes through very easily plays the ball back across which we love to see a nice little tap in for the striker the second example is a long ball through the defense where our striker gambles, takes a risk and it pays off. Beats the offside track, takes it around the goalkeeper and smashes it into the net in a 3-0 victory against Huesca. Our final tactic sees a predicted 12th place Heracles finish in 4th position. But before we take a look, here is today's sponsor. So let's talk about Skillshare for a second. Being that Skillshare is the perfect online learning community with thousands of classes in so many different topics. This is the perfect opportunity for all those people watching right now who are thinking about getting into content creating. Whether it be YouTube or Twitch, maybe even TikTok, there are so many classes that can help you develop to edit your videos, create thumbnails, maybe even plan your videos like the Marcus Brownlee class, which I took. Learning about how one of the best 
messed around, shoots a video can really help you in your thinking for planning your videos going forward so much more like it has done for me. And remember, there are no ads so you can stay focused throughout and Skillshare has given me an amazing deal for you guys with that the first 1,000 people to click the link below down in the description gets a free trial for the premium membership. Not to mention as well that if you got Skillshare for a whole year, it would cost you less than $10 a month, which is unbelievable value for the education it provides. So don't miss out on this opportunity and thank you once again for Skillshare. Our final tactic then is the 4-3-1-2 reactor tactic created by Andy Ward on the FM Base website. It seems to create so many chances, being that we finished second in the shots for 552 shots and scoring the third amount of goals in the league. Probably because we have two pressing forwards on attack and one shadow striker on attack, meaning that a three-pronged midfield and that shadow striker role can be very overpowered. In behind that though, we have a centre midfielder on support, two defensive wingers on support with inverted wing backs. Can you see a trend happening, viewers, where we can support that midfield from being counter-attacked? An attacking mentality, if we have a look in possession, we are playing out of defence. It's very simple, this one, and I like it a lot for that. Slightly shorter pass in directness, but with an extremely higher tempo. Running at the defence and in transition, again, it is a Gagan press. Out of possession, not using the offside trap this time round, we are using a much higher line of engagement and just a standard defensive line. Again, really opening up that pitch. And as for individual instructions, there aren't any selected unless you go to the defensive wingers, which has cross from the byline. Outside of that though, he has kept it so simple and yet it still works. It is basically just the shape and the player roles selected which really help this tactic produce the goods. And speaking of those wingers crossing from the byline, we can see the exact same thing happening here in the first goal. The, the winger gets the ball there, takes it to the byline. The other winger comes in and slots in at the back post unmarked. Again, the shadow striker closing the ball down really high at the pitch, plays in that pressing forward who's on the last line of defense, fires one in really nicely into the top corner, just catching them off guard and unaware. The third goal we can see here, the midfield running forward, the shadow striker plays it across, a bad ball to the second striker, but he finds so many players in the box there. At least three or four people could have tapped that in because the amount of runners going forward into the box just creates so many chances, creates absolute bedlam. The defense don't do not know who to mark or where to mark, and there we have another victory for us. Speaking of victories, I think this video was a huge success and I hope you agree and if you did maybe consider smashing that like button if you haven't done so already 500 likes and I'll find you four or five more tactics in the future let me know down in the comments the teams that you want me to use patreon.com forward slash megaloot gaming thank you so much for everyone who is supported on the patreon it really means that I can help pay Sid it really means that I can help continuing to do content that I love doing just like this thank you very much for watching I'll see you on the next video bye bye